Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So in this module, let us start looking at one uh, yet another interesting application of the principles of linear algebra and that is in the context of sparse regression. So far we have seen linear regression which is of course uh, an important concept uh, or an important technique in machine learning. Let us now extend it to the area of sparse regression. So what we want to start looking at in this module is sparse regression and what we have seen previously is basically linear regression. This is what we have seen previously and the sparse regression naturally this also is an important technique in machine machine learning and as well as uh, signal processing especially what we call as sparse signal processing. Okay. Now, what happens in sparse regression? Remember linear regression, sparse regression is a form of linear regression. So, let us start with our linear regression model, right. So, you have y hat equals theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 plus theta uh, well, I will say theta n x n where these are the components of the vector that is your x 1, x 2, x n these are the components of the n dimensional vector. So, this is your n cross 1. Now, if you remember this is the prediction of the response. and these are essentially your regression coefficients. These are the regression coefficients and these are x1, x2, x n, these are your regressors or these are also essentially what you call as the explanatory variables you might explanatory these are your explanatory variables. Now, the point is this is your general linear regression model. Now, sparse regression is a special form of linear regression wherein only a few of the explanatory variables are used to obtain a prediction that is to obtain the fewest number of that is to obtain the prediction using a linear combination of the fewest number of explanatory variables. So, what that means is essentially so what is sparse regression? Sparse regression is to basically obtain the linear prediction using the fewest number of explanatory variables or essentially what it means is using a sparse set or essentially
basically using only a sparse set of using only a sparse set of explanatory variables that is we want to use only very few explanatory variables to explain uh, the uh, to explain the response y okay and therefore we wish to this implies we have to determine a sparse so this basically this basically is your essentially a sparse regression so this basically gives you the sparse regression model in which this implies many theta i not all but many theta i are zero only very few theta i not equal to 0 only very few theta i's that is only very few remember the theta i's are regression coefficient so only very few theta i's are not equal to 0 so if you look at the vector of these regression coefficients this parameter vector right so this is the theta bar which will contain the regression coefficients you will have n regression coefficients so, this is the vector of regression coefficients. So, this is the vector or regression coefficients or the parameter vector you can say. So, what happens is many theta i So, therefore, this looks something like this. So, this vector looks something like, so if you look at an example, so you will have theta bar equal to, for instance, you will have lot of zeros at some point maybe 2, 0, maybe minus 3, 0, 0, 0, maybe a 1, 0, so on. So, large number of zeros, very few non zero. So, large number of zeros very few non very few non zeros okay so many and this such a re regression vector this is known as a sparse vector so, this contains large number of zeros. So, this is essentially what is termed as a sparse vector. So, this has an interesting property that is this theta bar vector of regression coefficients, the parameter vector is sparse, which means out of these n, let us say take a typical number, example you have 100, n equal to 100, very few, maybe around 5 or 6 are non zero. Right, and large the rest of the 90, 90, uh, uh, 95 or 94 uh, uh, values of theta i are 0. Now, what is interesting are it is not known a priori which theta i are 0. If it is known which theta i is 0, then the problem obviously as you can see becomes very simple. If it is not known which theta i are non-zero, then the problem is the following. Right? So, let us take a simple example. Let us take a simple example example let us say n equal to 100 out of which uh, n equal to 100 out of which n tilde equal to maybe let us say 60 or 0, but not known 
which theta i equal to 0. So, implies we have to examine all the possible combinations examine n choose n tilde equals or you can choose you can say n choose n minus n tilde which is the same we could choose 100 choose 40 combinations 100 choose 40 combinations of theta i and determine and determine the best theta theta bar. So, you have to choose a large number, you have to choose it for each possible combination of 40 theta to fit the linear regression model then determine right fit all these such linear regression models and determine which one is the best and naturally the complexity is going to be very high because 100 choose 40 is a very large number right. Even if it is not if you make this number slightly larger maybe a 1000 regressors and let us say 500 roughly 500 as 0, 500 are non-zero it becomes unmanageable, intractable right. The problem is NP hard because the complexity grows exponentially right. So, the complexity so this is a very large number right. And therefore, the complexity the complexity grows exponentially. Now, therefore, what is a feasible technique? So, this is not a feasible technique to determine the sparse vector theta bar. So, what then is a feasible technique? So, how then to determine the sparse regression uh, that is the vector uh, the sparse vector theta bar of regression coefficient. So, what is a practical technique? So, what then is a what is such that theta bar is sparse. That is you have to ensure that is you have to ensure sparsity. This can also be stated as uh, you can look at this theta bar if you look at this one can determine what is known as the L0 norm of theta bar. This is also known as the L0 norm, which is basically equal to the number of which is basically equal to the number of non-zero elements of theta bar and we want to minimize this L0 norm that is basically the what is the problem of sparse estimation. This is basically a problem of sparse estimation or you can say sparse signal recovery or you can also say in general sparse regression. essentially the problem of sparse regression. Now, we consider to do this for the sparse regression, remember we always start with the training data. So, consider let us start with the training data again let us say we have these m training samples. So, let us start with the Our training data is comprises of y1, the corresponding regressors x1, y2, 
these are the responses and these are the corresponding regressors. So, each of these is the response and these are the regressor or basically your explanatory variables right. Okay, and this is basically your 10 cross 1 vector I can denote x bar the mth sample as x bar 1 x bar 2 of m x bar n of m. So, these are basically your n cross 1 this is basically your n cross 1 vector ok. Now, we have the model we have to fit the model essentially the model that we want to fit is that uh, if we call this y k minus x bar k transpose theta bar if we call this as the error all right or you can also say we want to fit the models is that y k equal to x bar k transpose theta bar either there is an error which you want to minimize or if possible you want to fit this model exactly ok. So, this is the model that we are required to fit. Once again do not forget the fundamental constraint that this model has to fit while ensuring that theta bar is a sparse vector. So, essentially we want to find determine theta bar determine theta bar such that you have basically you have y 1 y 2 once again putting this as a vector you have y 1 y 2 y m this is equal to similar to what we have in the linear regression x 1 bar transpose 1 or x bar transpose 1 times you have your vector of the parameters which is your except that this is going to look little different I am going to describe that later. So, this is your regression model which essentially looks as so this is your y bar this is your matrix of regressors x bar and this is your theta bar and uh, remember this is basically your uh, m cross 1 vector it is good to always note the dimensions this is your m cross n matrix and this is your theta bar which is n cross 1 and this has to be sparse all right and uh, therefore, I can formulate this as y bar equal to x times theta bar and uh, as you already know theta bar has very few non zero coefficients 
which implies many coefficients are which implies many theta i are 0 and we have already seen an example and such a theta bar this is known as a sparse vector ok. And uh, this problem also has an interesting uh, name this is also termed as compressive sensing that is when we are trying to do a recovery of the parameter vector theta bar such that theta bar is sparse this is also has a name uh, this is also in fact it is a field rather which is termed as compressive sensing in area that has spawned several algorithms and many interesting techniques which is also termed as is also termed as this particular problem with, uh, with uh, which we can call as including remember theta bar 0 that is which ensures sparsity. This is also termed as compressive Now, why is this termed as compressive? This is a very big field, this is a very recent, this is a very recent and sort of path breaking field with several algorithms with several innovations across many areas such as signal processing, uh, communication, radar, tomography so on and many significant implications for a, a broad variety of fields wherever uh, they re, there are problems that are similar to for instance regression, least squares, signal recovery and so on and so forth. Okay. Now why is this termed as compressive sensing? Why compressive sensing? Now, why is this termed as compressive sensing? Now, if you go back to this, you have the problem y bar equal to x theta bar. This typically looks as follows. The vector y bar looks as this with x looking like a wide matrix like this and your theta bar looking typically like this not what we had drawn earlier but rather like this. So, this is your y bar which is m cross 1 this is x which is m cross n and theta bar which is n cross 1. So, typically what happens is this matrix is not at all matrix but this matrix is a wide matrix that is this is basically if you look at this, this is typically an underdetermined system. This is typically an underdetermined system. This implies that the number of equations n is significantly lower than n. This implies uh, number of equations much less than number of unknowns. This is typically the problem one faces right and in such a situation remember the conventional linear regression conventional linear regression has m greater than equal to 10 right there you have 
the matrix x bar is a tall matrix and then one can employ the least square solution right you remember so conventional regression m greater than equal to n implies that basically x is a tall matrix and implies one can employ employ one can employ the least squares which is basically which basically implies your regressor theta hat or what we call as theta hat this is given as x transpose x inverse x transpose y bar ok. However, however this approach cannot be used here. this approach cannot be used when m less than m less than n since x transpose x you can show easily in this is not invertible when m is less than less than when m is less than n for that matter when m is much less than n uh, your x transpose x is not invertible so, you cannot use the conventional least square solution then what is the property that has to be used one has to rely on the sparsity of the vector theta bar this is only possible to reconstruct theta bar employing the property that theta bar is a sparse vector. So, in such a scenario therefore, otherwise the reconstruction is not possible and therefore this is also known as path and now therefore if you look at this problem right and uh, where m is much less than m implies number of measurement much less than number of uh, the number of measurements is much less than the number of unknowns implies you are sensing that is sensing theta bar using very few measurements or essentially a compressed set of measurements right. So, this is sensing of theta bar using a compressed sense of measurements that is why this is known as compressive sensing. So, this implies that this is basically sensing of theta bar using very few or a compressed
set of measurements and thereby this is termed hence Hence, this is termed as compressive sensing that is basically we are sensing theta bar using very few measurements or a significantly reduced set of measurements uh, or a very compressed set of measurements. Hence, this is termed as compressive sensing and this has significant applications as I told you this is a radically new field. I think it is uh, most of the techniques or most of the innovations have happened in the last 10 to 15 years and uh, significant innovation has been achieved and it has many applications signal processing, imaging, tomography, uh, geology, radar so on and so forth. So, many applications. So, this has such as for instance signal processing, ML, geology, imaging, tomography, etc. All right. So, there are significant applications of this field of this newly emerging field of compressive sensing which is radical because remember conventional signal processing signal estimation requires the number of measurements uh, to be more than the number of unknowns that is what we have seen in the conventional regression the linear regression that we have the solution for which was given using the least squares but in sparse regression the number of measurements is significantly fewer and therefore one has to rely on the sparsity of the vector theta bar otherwise the reconstruction is not possible and therefore the techniques that are developed are very novel and significantly different from the earlier generation of conventional techniques which use the L2 norm. Remember this is the compressive sensing the area of compressive sensing is based on L0 norm and in fact also as can be shown the L1 norm minimization hence the set of techniques are radically different from the previous generation of techniques right and uh, this naturally can lead to has been shown to lead to improved performance and as applications in several fields be it other image processing, signal processing, uh, tomography so on and so forth and it has revolutionized several fields all right. So, let us continue discovering this and let us extend let us continue let us stop here and continue this discussion by formulating uh, by demonstrating the solutions algorithm to solve the sparse segregation problem in the next module. Thank you very much.